Dad, please, take me to the hospital. Mom. She's, she's. Michael's voice quivered with desperation as he pleaded. I remained crouched, unable to move due to my water breaking. In such moments, a child's instinct is to seek comfort from their father. But David's response over the phone was callous. I'm on a business trip, can't help you, he chuckled dismissively. It was astounding how he could lie so effortlessly. Michael, overwhelmed, burst into tears. A week later, after safely delivering the baby, as I prepared to leave the hospital, my phone rang. It was David. Michael answered, and David, in a panic, asked, How's your mother? We're about to bury her. Michael, ignoring David's confusion, ended the call. Let's go. Mom, he said, his determination evident. Together, we embarked on a mission our own form of retribution. My name is Sarah, a 33 years old homemaker, residing with my husband David and our five years old son Michael. In my spare time, I share cooking recipes and parenting advice online, a hobby that unexpectedly gained popularity. Even after David returned from his work assignment, I continued posting videos, finding solace in connecting with others through shared experiences of parenthood and homemaking. The news of my pregnancy brought both joy and apprehension, prompting new considerations and preparations. But as I reflect on the challenges and triumphs of my journey, one thing remains steadfast, my determination to navigate motherhood with resilience and grace for the sake of Michael and my own well-being. Despite the upheaval caused by David's neglect and betrayal, I found strength in the love and support of my son. Together, we confronted the challenges that lay ahead, forging ahead with courage and determination. And as I looked towards the future, I embraced the opportunity to redefine my path, determined to build a life filled with love, purpose, and fulfillment. I must confess that I had become excessively absorbed in the joyful anticipation of the pregnancy, perhaps too distracted to notice the shadows of impending troubles that were beginning to cast themselves over our once tranquil family life. It was a typical holiday morning, the air suffused with the aroma of breakfast, as David, ensconced in his smartphone, engrossed himself in its digital labyrinth. Witnessing this scene, Michael, buoyant with the enthusiasm of childhood, bounded up to his father, eagerly proposing a game of treasure hunt a newfound favorite activity. The morning seemed to unfold in its customary serenity, yet the tranquility was shattered when David, abruptly concealing his phone, issued a sharp rebuke to Michael, urging him to maintain silence and citing the urgency of his work. His tone cut through the air like a blade, leaving a lingering sense of disquiet. Moved by an instinctive urge to quell the rising tension, I interjected, gently suggesting that such harshness was unwarranted, especially on a leisurely Saturday morning. David's response, however, was anything but conciliatory, as he disparaged my role as a homemaker, drawing a stark comparison to his responsibilities as a corporate employee. The palpable tension in the room only seemed to intensify, prompting tears to well up in Michael's eyes. Rushing to his side, I offered words of comfort and reassurance, seeking to assuage the hurt caused by his father's sharp words. Yet, this incident was not an isolated one David's demeanor had been growing increasingly distant and critical in recent times. He appeared increasingly preoccupied with his phone, his interactions becoming more strained and his criticisms more frequent often dismissing my contributions as a housewife with contemptuous remarks like carefree. Initially, I attributed his behavior to the pressures of work, but it soon became apparent that something more profound was amiss. On one fateful day, as David returned home with a somber countenance, his eyes fell upon the scattered toys in the corner, his brow furrowing with displeasure. He demanded to know why they had not been tiddied up, despite my recent efforts to organize them. The tension in the room seemed to thicken with each passing moment, leaving an unspoken question hanging in the air what had precipitated this sudden change in his demeanor. As I rushed to address the fallout from David's harsh words, the gravity of his criticism weighed heavily on my mind. His reproachful tone and disparaging remarks about my ability to manage both Michael and the household cut deep, leaving me feeling inadequate and defeated. Even Michael's well-intentioned efforts to mediate the situation were met with David's cold indifference, further deepening the rift between us. Amidst the turmoil, I made a silent vow to confront the underlying issues plaguing our relationship. The following evening, with a sense of trepidation, I initiated a conversation with David, 
hoping for a resolution. However, his response only added to my growing unease. His abrupt announcement of a two-week business trip, coupled with his dismissive demeanor, left me feeling unsettled and isolated. As David retreated into the confines of our bedroom, shutting me up both physically and emotionally, I sought refuge in my work. Immersed in the meticulous editing process of my online videos, I found a fleeting sense of purpose and distraction. Yet, beneath the facade of productivity, I grappled with a myriad of emotions doubt, frustration, an annoying sense of uncertainty about the future of our marriage. With each passing moment, the chasm between us seemed to widen, overshadowing the once cherished moments of intimacy and connection. Despite my best efforts to salvage our relationship, David's aloofness and lack of engagement only served to deepen my sense of disillusionment. As I navigated the tumultuous waters of our crumbling marriage, a part of me couldn't shake the lingering suspicion that David's sudden business trip was merely a facade and elaborate alibi concealing a deeper, more troubling truth. Yet, I hesitated to confront this possibility head-on, fearful of the painful revelations it might unearth. In the silence of the night, as I grappled with the weight of uncertainty, I couldn't help but wonder was our marriage hanging by a thread, or was there still hope for reconciliation amidst the turmoil? David's recent behavior has plunged our household into a state of disquiet, leaving me grappling with a growing sense of apprehension. It all began innocuously enough, amidst the routines of daily life, when I found myself rummaging through the house in search of some misplaced receipts essential for managing our budget. Despite scouring every nook and cranny, the elusive documents remained stubbornly out of sight. In a last-ditch effort, I turned my attention to a small chest nestled in the living room a repository usually reserved for Michael's kindergarten paraphernalia. Yet, as I delved deeper into its recesses, I stumbled upon a startling discovery, a false bottom, ingeniously concealed within. The realization dawned on me like a bolt from the blue this was no accidental oversight but a deliberate act of subterfuge. The implications of this clandestine modification sent a chill down my spine, prompting me to seek solace and advice from the one place I knew I could find it, my online community. Sharing my findings with them, I was met with a flood of responses brimming with concern, suspicion, and solidarity, validating my growing unease and fueling my resolve to confront the looming specter of deceit head-on. With David conveniently absent on what he claimed was a protracted business trip, I seized the opportunity to delve deeper into the mysteries lurking within our home. Days turned into weeks as I meticulously combed through every clue preparing myself for the inevitable reckoning that awaited his return. But just as I braced myself for the anticipated showdown, life threw an unexpected curveball my way. Amidst the tumult of my brewing confrontation with David, the sudden onset of labor pains heralded the imminent arrival of our second child a poignant reminder that amidst the chaos and uncertainty, life's most profound moments continue to unfold, offering a glimmer of hope and purpose in the face of adversity. Amidst the excruciating waves of pain, I found myself collapsing to the ground, grappling with the intensity that threatened to engulf me. Frantically searching for my smartphone, I realized it was nowhere to be found, adding a layer of panic to the already dire situation. With every passing moment, the urgency mounted, and I knew I had to act swiftly. In a desperate plea, I implored Michael to assist me, his eyes widening with alarm as he hastened to fulfill my request. Despite his tender age, there was a sense of determination in his actions that belied his youth, a resolve to aid his mother in her time of need. As the chaos unfolded, the call inadvertently switched to speaker mode, allowing David's voice to echo through the room. Michael's tearful plea for assistance was met with callous indifference from his father who callously dismissed our distress, citing his supposed absence on a business trip. His cold disregard pierced through me like a knife, leaving me stunned and hurt. With Michael's sobs blending with my own, I couldn't shake the sense of betrayal that washed over me. How could David turn a blind eye to our suffering, especially his own son's desperate plea for help? In a final act of desperation, Michael reached out to my mother, his trembling voice betraying his fear and confusion. As consciousness slipped away from me, I found myself in a hospital bed, surrounded by concerned faces. As the medical staff attended to me, my thoughts turned to David his absence starkly evident in this moment of crisis. It dawned on me that his supposed business trip was nothing but a flimsy excuse, a betrayal that fueled my anger. But amidst the turmoil, 
There was a glimmer of hope the imminent arrival of our daughter Lily, a ray of light in the darkness. As I awaited her birth, a fierce determination took root within me. This charade could not go unchallenged. There were decisions to be made, confrontations to be had, and a future to safeguard. And with Lily as my guiding star, I was ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead, fortified by the love of my family and the strength of my resolve. After what felt like an eternity, I finally succumbed to the weight of exhaustion and drifted into a deep slumber. When I awoke, an entire day had slipped by, and the solace of sleep had somewhat eased my burdens. Reluctantly, I reached out to David, informing him of the birth, but silence echoed back. His absence stung, a stark reminder of his self-absorption. The thought of his blissful oblivion during his business trip incensed me, but I couldn't help but anticipate the reckoning awaiting his return. Thanks to the attentive care of my parents, I managed to regain my strength smoothly. On the day of my discharge, they arrived, accompanied by Michael, who had been under their watchful eye. Mom, are you feeling better? Michael's concern was palpable. Yes. Much better, I reassured him, mindful of the worry I must have caused. Embracing him, I promised to indulge in our favorite pastime of treasure hunt soon. A week later, as I prepared to step out, Michael alerted me to a ringing phone. Mom, someone's calling, he called out. I can't answer right now, I replied, preoccupied. Oblivious to my words, Michael answered, his innocent curiosity leading him to pick up. The muffled voice on the other end revealed itself as David's, inquiring after me. His shock upon learning our supposed burial plans was palpable. Quickly realizing the gravity of the situation, I urged Michael to join me as we embarked on a covert mission. With a smile, he complied, leaving behind the confusion of David's frantic inquiries. Our task completed, we returned home under the shroud of twilight, my weary body yearning for rest. Entrusting Michael and Lily to my parents, I set out to confront David upon his imminent return. As dawn broke, David burst through the door, panic etched on his face. Confusion clouded his features as he beheld me calmly awaiting him. With a smile, I greeted him, revealing our burial had taken place without him. His bewilderment at Michael's words mirrored his own folly, as the truth slowly dawned on him. I uncovered the truth about the ring, the one meant for your mistress, complete with both your names engraved on it. Quite thoughtful, wouldn't you agree? I gestured towards the chest, watching as David's complexion drained of color. How? How did you find out? He stammered. It all began with sharing my concerns in online videos about your peculiar behavior I explained calmly. Viewers speculated about infidelity, and then there was the discovery of the ring hidden in the chest, a brand new piece with both our names etched on it. A glaring red flag, to say the least. Following the advice of my online audience, I took the step to hire a detective agency in anticipation of divorce proceedings, seeking concrete evidence for potential alimony claims. While you were away on your business trip, I engaged an investigator, whose findings confirmed my suspicions your infidelity with Jessica, a 23 years old bartender from the town of your solo assignment. It's a tale as old as time, isn't it? Loneliness breeding temptation, leading to a clandestine affair. And yet, even upon your return home, the affair persisted, hidden behind a veil of secrecy. Gradually, your frustrations turned to hostility towards me, culminating in your deceitful retreat under the guise of another business trip to rendezvous with her. That ring, intended as a token of your affection for her, must have seemed like the ultimate betrayal. Did you hurry back because your mistress was enraged by the wrong-sized ring with your name on it? I challenged, noting the shift in David's expression. His face contorted with disbelief as I revealed my ruse. Yes, I swapped the rings I confessed calmly. I replaced the intended ring with my own, a relic from happier times, a reminder of a love now lost. In a fit of panic, David tore through the chest, frantically searching for the missing ring. Where is it? Where did you hide it? He demanded, his voice tinged with desperation. But the truth was laid bare the ring, a symbol of his betrayal, now inextricably intertwined with the shattered remnants of our once happy life. I told her we buried it a I stated calmly, watching David struggle for words. Suddenly, the front door burst open. David, are you all right? Are you still not done? Jessica's voice cut through the tension. She stood before me, 
a stark contrast to the images provided by the detective agency. In person, she appeared as nothing more than a flashy young woman, likely fueled by anger over the ring with my name on it. I couldn't help but marvel at the sheer audacity of the situation. Ah, you must be David's mistress, Jessica. I greeted her with a hint of sarcasm. Let me guess you dropped out of music school, hoping to find an easy route to wealth. Instead, you ended up toiling away at a cheap bar because no wealthy man would have you. You settled for a married man with a stagnant career, relishing in the false triumph over his wife. Am I close? Caught off guard by the accuracy of my assumptions, Jessica faltered, rendered speechless. In this digital age, uncovering someone's background was child's play, particularly for a woman like Jessica, driven by a craving for validation. It didn't take long for me to unearth her history on social media. Undeterred, Jessica remained defiant. So what? David loves me. He proposed to me and gave me the ring I desired. Just divorce him already, she retorted. I don't need your approval. But the truth was already crystal clear to me. After five years of marriage, blessed with children, David's infidelity during his business trip, neglect during my pregnancy, and his mistreatment of both me and Michael had shattered any illusions of a happy union. I've already decided to divorce him, I stated firmly. Unfazed by Jessica's taunts, I pressed on. By the way, aren't you going to search for that oh-so-important ring? Where did you hide it? I teased. Today, Michael and I went for a walk to the beach. We indulged in a treasure hunt. It was quite enjoyable. My words elicited a visible change in David's demeanor. Don't tell me you buried it there, he muttered, his voice trembling. Without another word, he dashed outside, Jessica following close behind. I stepped outside immediately, heading towards the buried spot, which lay about a 20 minutes walk away. With my smartphone tightly gripped in hand, I briskly made my way towards the familiar local beach. Upon reaching the shoreline, I spotted David and Jessica in a frenzied state, digging frantically in various spots along the sandy expanse. It's not here either. Where the hell is it? David's frustration reverberated in his voice as he continued to dig with increasing urgency. It was an expensive ring. What are you doing? Find it already. Jessica's impatience was palpable, her tone laden with irritation. As they persisted in their frantic search, oblivious to my presence, I calmly began to film the scene with my smartphone. Their panicked movements and desperate attempts were almost comical, and despite the seriousness of the situation, I couldn't help but suppress a chuckle. This particular beach held a special significance for our small family of three. It was a place we frequented often, enjoying moments of bonding and joy. Our favorite pastime involved playing treasure hunt games, with Michael taking the lead in burying various treasures in the sand. These treasures ranged from small trinkets like toy cars and cicada shells to other knickknacks that Michael held dear. However, today's treasure hunt took an unexpected turn when Michael proposed burying a ring. His suggestion caught me off guard, but his reasoning was simple yet profound. He had observed David's recent fondness for a particular ring, noting the joy it seemed to bring his father. Little did Michael know, the ring held significance in David's extramarital affair. Nevertheless, moved by Michael's innocence and hopeful outlook, I agreed to bury it, hoping it might serve as a catalyst for David's return to his former self. Now, as David feverishly scoured the beach for the ring, his thoughts were consumed entirely by Jessica, disregarding the welfare of his own family. As I continued to film the unfolding drama, a sobering realization began to dawn upon me. Tears streamed down my face as anger boiled within me, fueled by David's betrayal that shattered our family. The harsh reality was evident, and I knew deep down that things wouldn't revert to how they were before. Later, when I returned home, I meticulously edited the footage. The video captured their frantic search for the ring, rendering their actions tragically comical. Thanks to a sound capturing app, I managed to attain perfect audio quality. Blurring their faces, I added narration detailing our family's history, the cherished treasure Hans Michael loved, and how David's selfish affair tore our family apart. I ensured anonymity by anonymizing all names before uploading the finished video titled I Buried the Ring My Husband Planned to Give to His Mistress. Instantly, the video garnered a staggering number of views, flooded with comments condemning David and Jessica. As I scrolled through, I noticed a tired-looking David and Jessica returning, 
Having finally unearthed the ring buried on the beach, now covered in sand and dirtied, they noisily complained about the ordeal, with David holding the ring and a crumpled piece of paper found buried alongside it. Without a second thought, David tossed the paper into the trash, dismissing it as disgusting. Coldly, I retrieved the paper from the trash and unfolded it. Despite being crumpled, it bore a drawing Michael had crafted with crayons a depiction of our family smiling together. David's expression shifted, betraying a mix of emotions as he finally comprehended its significance. This drawing is Michael's wish I stated firmly. You've trampled on his desire for a happy family, sneaking around in infidelity and neglecting your own kin. You are truly despicable, and I cannot forgive you. The living room fell into a heavy silence after my outburst. Jessica appeared remorseful, and I turned to her declaring that I wouldn't forgive her either. I vowed to stand against individuals like her who destroyed families and harmed innocent children. With a firm gaze, I demanded to know about Michael's whereabouts and the newborn's well-being. David's voice wavered as he finally showed concern for the children, but it was too little, too late. They were safe at my parents' house, shielded from his neglect and obsession with the ring. Enraged by his sudden interest after ignoring them for so long, I refused to entertain him any longer. My firm stance left them intimidated, and they eventually acquiesced, agreeing to leave. As they departed, I remained resolute, unwilling to relent in my determination to protect my children and rebuild our shattered lives. After the dust settled, David and Jessica sheepishly exited the house, signaling the impending divorce discussions. Determined not to concede, I tightened my fists, steeling myself for the challenges ahead. Despite the time it took, the divorce was eventually finalized in my favor. David may have momentarily cooled off from my scolding, expressing a desire to reconcile, but I dismissed it as mere folly. His intentions were clear. He would inevitably stray again. Even as he entertained thoughts of reconciliation, David had already begun living with Jessica. It was evident that he sought to maintain relationships with both of us while maintaining the facade of a devoted father to Michael and Lily. Such a proposition was utterly unacceptable to me. Naturally, I demanded a substantial alimony from David. Despite his desperate pleas for installment payments, I stood firm, insisting on receiving the entire sum at once. However, there was a pressing concern the viral spread of the video I had uploaded. Despite my efforts to maintain anonymity by blurring faces, keen-eyed viewers managed to identify David and Jessica through subtle clues in the footage. Articles proliferated online, exposing David's infidelity and Jessica's history of targeting married men. The repercussions extended beyond personal affairs, David's actions had repercussions in his professional life as well. His frequent visits to Jessica's establishment during business trips had negatively impacted his work performance, leading to his reassignment to a different branch. Moreover, his deceitful use of paid leave to visit Jessica during his supposed business trip resulted in his termination from his job. It was fortunate that I had already secured the alimony payments. Yet, amidst the turmoil, there remained the matter of child support. I had concerns about that too, but David's parents agreed to cover it until he found a new job. However, with David's name now widely recognized, finding employment might prove challenging for a while a consequence of his own actions. I also sought alimony from Jessica, but she had quit her job at the snack bar and was in a panicked, desperate state. David and Jessica attempted to monetize their relationship by broadcasting videos, hoping for easy money. However, they faced swift backlash and soon abandoned the endeavor. The relentless criticism painted them as a couple of thieves, shamelessly thick-skinned and disgraceful. Jessica's parents made a one-time payment for her portion of the alimony but made it clear it was the last time they would bail her out. Initially, David reveled in the attention from a younger woman, while Jessica thrilled in the forbidden excitement of engaging with someone else's husband. However, once the novelty wore off, reality hit them hard. Meanwhile, my channel soared in popularity. I found myself inundated with consultations from mothers dealing with unfaithful husbands and working on projects offered by various companies. Broadcasting became a source of joy, and I drew energy from the comments of my viewers every day. Moreover, my income, which had previously been negligible, saw a significant boost. With this newfound financial stability, I renovated and expanded our family home, where I lived with my parents and children. 
everyone seemed content, especially with the joyous presence of the grandchildren. Michael had grown into a strong, supportive big brother, and Lily was thriving playing happily alongside him. Despite lingering concerns, I had refrained from allowing the children to see David since then. To my surprise, Michael seemed unfazed by it all. Dad, it's okay he reassured me. He didn't help even when mom was in pain. I don't need such a terrible person. His clarity stunned me, reminding me of children's keen observations of their parents. From then on, Lily and I would play treasure hunt together. Michael's innocent smile brought me a sense of relief. David may have departed, but Lily had entered our lives, enriching our family in ways we hadn't imagined. Witnessing the lively faces of the children brought a joy that surpassed anything else. If we could continue to spend our days happily and closely as a family, that would be my greatest happiness.